Hi, this is JP Morgan. We're out here at Richard Fuller Lab and we're scanning my face. Actually, we're here to answer the question, which is better, Noritsu or Frontier Scanner? Also, to talk about six ways you can get great scans from your photo lab. I want you to know this, I want you to understand it, so you can get the images that you want when you're shooting on film. So I've got Bill Pine here with us. He's gonna teach us all the things we need to know to get great scans from our photo lab. That's right. All right, so here's the Frontier Scanner. I mean, this has been the classic, I mean, this has been kind of the staple in scanning for years. I mean, I don't know how many years, but it's been a long time. Right, when, when we started transitioning out of uh, transparency film and into negative film, this was the, the first scanner that we started using for that purpose. Uh, it's limited. Uh, when we look at the Noritsu, you'll see that the ability to preview images are six up, so you can see how they play off of one another. And as you can see here, when we're scanning, it, we're looking at one image at a time. Yeah, that single image at a time is interesting. I also see that you have the person's kind of their, their profile images up, so as the scanner uh, the person scanning is looking at the images, he can kind of reference back to the things that they've chosen and what they do. Absolutely. Right? So that happens in, in all of our scanners. And we're actually matching the preview to the profile. Uh, so we're matching skin tones, we're matching color and density. Uh, it's, a, it's a reference point. So we really have side-by-side -side comparison. Okay, so here are the, here's the Noritsu scanner. So just talk about the difference and what's going on here. So the benefit of the Noritsu scanner in this case is that uh, they're able to preview six images at a time as opposed to one. While they're giving each image special care and corrections, individual color and density corrections, the scan results are much better going from frame to frame throughout a roll and even roll to roll. You'll get a lot more consistent results that way from your scans. And that's very important to our photographers that they get very consistent results. So the bottom line as we leave the scanners and get into the other points on how to get good scans from your lab, I think the bottom line really is, what's the look that you love? Mm -hmm. Do you see a look that you like? Do you see a photographer who's using a look that you really like and that's done on the Frontier Scanner? You know, is it done on the Noritsu? It just helps you make that decision on which one you want to scan on. All right, so number one, you can choose the scanner that's right for you, but now how do you communicate with the lab? So that's number two communication with the lab because you've got to communicate what it is you want to get. So what do they need to do? Right, so the best thing is just to, to, to let us know what your preferences are. If you're admiring a particular photographer online, uh, directing us with that vehicle is really helpful. But the biggest thing is just communicating. I like warm colors, cool colors, these sort of things. Some There's trends where people like darker scans or lighter scans, high key, airy. These sort of things are great communications. We also offer uh, sample images. You can send sample images to us uh, from that shoot or another shoot that's inspiring you to guide us in the way that we scan. And then if there's something that you're unhappy with, let us know and we'll make some quality adjustments. We'll look at things so we are able to really deliver. Our end goal is to give you exactly what you're looking for from your film scans. It doesn't matter whether you're using Richard Photo Lab or whatever lab you're using, communication with the lab is key so that they know what it is you're after and that you are gonna get the image that you want. Absolutely. So number three is exposure. I think this is probably the most important thing that you're doing every time you take an image that's going to give you a good scan in the end. Absolutely. A good negative will render a terrific scan. And a bad negative, it's really hard. So not just exposure, but also light in the shadows. I mean, you can get a, you can have someone stand in direct sunlight, but if the shadows just fall deep, you know, you're really fighting a curve there that's hard to make that work. And that's why a lot of film photographers meter for the shadows. They, ex they overexpose intentionally by a stop or two and then meter in the shadows because they want to make sure that they get exposure there. And if the, if the highlights are slightly overexposed, the scanner can still work very well with that. Consistency and doing consistently the same thing over and over again. That's what's going to give you the best scans. Absolutely. Very consistent results. And you then have the ability to review those scans and, and adjust accordingly. So don't get in a situation where you start freaking out going, well, I'm not sure, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add more this time, or I'm going to just expose the same, meter the same, and just keep that consistent. And then when you see your scans, if you feel like they aren't as dense as you want, if you look at your negatives, they're not as dense, feel like maybe you need to change that, then make an adjustment. But don't keep changing it all the time. You'll never get consistent scans. That's absolutely right. That's great advice. Not only consistency and exposure, but photographers a lot of times say, well, I'd like, I've never shot... Uh, Fuji 400, I'm gonna shoot that on this wedding. Right, that's and that's a bad idea. 
Well, it's a great idea. Actually, they're both beautiful films. However, I think it's important that while you're shooting Portra 400, for example, or for Fuji 400H, that you stick with that through that shoot. Consistency is key, just like we were talking about. It would be like, rec I would never recommend that someone shoot half of, or scan half of their job on a Frontier and half of it on a Noritsu. They render different results, and in fact, uh, film type and film choice is even a greater variable than the scanner. It's a lot more apparent the film differences than it is the scanner differences. There's also a great amount of knowledge on our blog about that in terms of exposure and the way that scans react to the exposure as well as the different film types and there's great examples there. Yeah. Number six, test, test, test. And what we mean by that is we mean uh, shoot some Portra 800, shoot some Portra 400, shoot 400H, choose the film that you like, and then test your exposures. Move your exposures around. Find if a stop over or normal is better, more preferred. And so you want to just find where that sweet spot is for you. And then you can repeat those results over and over again. That also includes the way you're metering, the film choice, the exposure, all of those things. Narrow it down. Consistency is key, and the only way to find that sweet spot is to do some testing. So there you have it. Six things you should know from scanners to execution out in the field in order to get good scans with your film when you're shooting film. Any last minute words? We're Anything here else? to help you out. We're looking forward to speaking to you. Okay. Richard Photo Lab is an incredible lab. They're located here in Los Angeles. They've been processing film for people all over the world, literally all over the world. People ship their film in here. So look at the profiles of some of the great wedding photographers that are out there if you're going to match them to those, or the great event shooters. And just see those profiles, communicate with the lab exactly what you want, test your film, choose your scanner, get a good exposure, and in the end you're going to get a great scan every single time. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Let's do it. Hi, this is JP Morgan here for Squarespace. What's in your website? Nothing? Well, it's time to get Squarespace then. Get started. You can put a gallery up, you can put your images up, you can put your video up. It's a very easy platform to work with, great templates. You can even try it for free and you don't even have to give a credit card. Photographers, videographers, we need websites so we exist somewhere on the internet. So get out there and get it started. So it's time to subscribe to the Slam Lambs and Hammer Time. <laughs> <laughs> It's so beat. sad. <laughs> <Twiddle done. laughs> Man, it's really sad. <laughs> you had to look. You had to look. <laughs>